Welcome back to Startup Hack. All right, so you know how everybody's been freaking out over DeepSeek this week, and what we're going to talk about today is kind of the week and the disruption that DeepSeek has caused on the AI space this week, right? Let's talk about this because we're going to talk about all this in the video right now. Let's dive in. Welcome back to Startup Hack. I'm Spencer Thomason. Here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps, as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. With over a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered tech teams and products. All right, so we're going to dive in today and talk a little bit about OpenAI and what they're screaming about. So let's jump over to some articles here. But OpenAI has evidence that its models help train China's deep seek, right? So there's a lot of irony going on here. So Chinese artificial intelligence company Deep Seek disrupted Silicon Valley this week with the release of their cheaply developed AI models that compete with the flagship offering from OpenAI. But the ChatGPT maker suspects they're built upon OpenAI data. So OpenAI and Microsoft are investigating whether the China's rival used OpenAI's API to integrate OpenAI's model into DeepSeek's own models. So the outlet, source, the outlet sources said that Microsoft security research detected large amounts of data were being exfiltrated through OpenAI's developer accounts in the late 2024. And so they actually think this was DeepSeek actually uh, stealing a lot of their training data that they've paid tons of money to build, right? So OpenAI told the Financial Times that it found evidence linking DeepSeek to the use of distillation, a common technique developers use to train AI models by extracting data from larger, more capable ones. It's an efficient way to train smaller models at a fraction of the more than $100 million that OpenAI spent to train GPT-4. So basically they took this work, stole it, was able to use it, and then be able to build in, uh, innovative things on top of it, right? Now, OpenAI has definitely decided that actually, yeah, protecting one's IP is important, right? So if you're not on the dev team, DeepSeek is being accused of using a technique called distillation, right? And this is what we just talked about. But the bottom line is DeepSeek's new powerful AI model that claims that it claims was built for a fraction of the cost of programs like ChatGPT and Llama shook a lot of the US companies this week and OpenAI especially stands to lose a lot if DeepSeek becomes the new AI darling. And this is definitely true because what's happened here is that Sam Altman's made some pretty big claims where he said, hey, look, uh, you know, startups with only $10 million are totally hopeless to compete against OpenAI. He's trying to scare off the little guys from coming in and trying to be scrappy and innovative, right? And so, Today, OpenAI's boss has reported posted a thread complimenting the impressive, you know, DeepSeek R1. So it is impressive because whether they stole the data or not, right? And this is this old viral clip that he's talking about here, where he says, you know, uh, there's an old video of him running around where he called the building of AI model on the budget of ten million dollars hopeless. Now, if DeepSeek is, you know, cheating and just training all their data on that and basically piggybacking on top of OpenAI's work and then doing some innovation against it, then he's got some pretty interesting claims, right? And so what this shows, though, is that there is actually, no matter how much you try to guard against your IP, there is a democratization of AI development. And part of what we're seeing of that is that whether you try to hide it or not, it's pretty easy to reverse engineer the data and the training models that are being used in an open in a, a, a model. And so this definitely is going to lead to more diverse and competitive AI landscape because Basically, it's almost impossible to be able to keep your LLM usable or to allow people to use it without people being able to steal it. And that's really what we're going to see. And so what that will do is no matter what, you're going to put stuff out there and it's going to... Um, and it's gonna ha it's basically copyable. And that's what they're seeing. So this definitely uh, triggered off um, a huge sell off this week for Nvidia, right? So Nvidia lost a $600 billion market cap this week, right? Um, and it's because of all this turmoil. Now, why does this affect Nvidia, right? Uh, how did this fail? Because what it is basically is that DeepSeek is running off of chips that were from 2022 and, 20 and earlier. So basically, they kind of went on eBay, bought some old hardware like you or I, you know, uh, peons might do. They didn't really buy it on eBay, but you know what I mean? They went and bought an old bunch of technology or they had bought it previously and they continue to use it and show that they can use this 
again, maybe by stealing some of the previous training models, but they did add some innovative layers on top of it that added their reasoning to be able to run at a fraction of the cost. So they're proving that you don't need the latest and greatest trillion dollars worth of uh, NVIDIA chips. Well, obviously to a huge company, you know, trillion dollar company like NVIDIA, this is going to hit their stock price. So this week there's definitely been a hit to NVIDIA stock, right? So, you know, just even today they're down 3%. It's been kind of an interesting week because we've seen a ton of Sigza, uh, Seesaw, right? So going into, uh, you know, Sunday, you know, it was riding pretty high. It was at, you know, the near all time high was like 149. It was pretty close. It was like 147. And then we see deep seek get released and there was some initial and then over the weekend, boom, down here. So this 20% drop, and then it kind of came back up the next day, but came over. So from the peak, NVIDIA is down 20%, right? So from this peak down to here, 20% there. Whoops, I keep missing it. 20% right there, 19.6%, which evaluates to a $600 billion market cap loss. Huge hit against NVIDIA because the problem with this is, is that if you can train and you can use efficient models without having to have all this expensive hardware, that's bad news for NVIDIA. They're trying to sell their chips. They want people to come spend the billions of dollars they have to spend to uh, get their, you know, to train their models. So NVIDIA stock definitely took a serious hit and it's been very volatile this week. And it highlights the sensitivity to AI innovation and the competition in the AI space is definitely intensifying. So I don't think we've seen a lot of change. My opinion to AI hasn't changed, but if your company is still struggling and you have disconnected systems, hit us up because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting these systems to help your company work like a well-oiled machine. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer because we can help you out. Now, DeepSeek's approach emphasizes efficient model architecture. So whether they stole their data or not and how much it costs them to train that, either way, it's still running more efficiently. So their training methodologies show innovative resource utilization and their model performance to cost ratio is particularly notable. Even if they had stolen and piggybacked on top of this, they are... Um, they, they were able to, you know, to now drive this to where it runs more efficiently on the same set of chips or on lower levels of chips. So the implication for AI future here is big because if we can continue to optimize and innovate rather than just throwing more hardware at it and trying to go bigger, 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 which is what I've been talking about for months, which by the way, if you haven't heard, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because I talk a lot about this. And so this is an important piece to where we're going to see things go in the future. And this is really important. And it's part of the reason why open, like DeepSeek had to open source this. So why they had to open source this, because ultimately people aren't going to trust a Chinese company. They're not going to pass a lot of their you know, data over to them. So China had to release this and get it out into the masses. Now, if you want to see how much they got this into the masses, in 10 days, there's been 5.2 million pulls on uh, on Olam. Now, Olam is a really easy way to get up and running on an LLM really quickly. To put this in comparison, eight weeks ago, Llama 3.3, now granted, this is a pretty big model, so maybe a better comparison, well, like even 5.4, this is a really small, mo a smaller model at 14 billion, only a quarter million pulls, even Llama 3.2, which is probably one of the most popular models here, seven point, you know, these two here, which 21 million, but that was 21 million over two months, right? This one was 7.9 million over four months, right? So we're not seeing hardly anywhere near the 5.2 in 10 days. So this is definitely, you're seeing this, and this is why uh, DeepSeek had to release this to be open source, right? Because they had to release it to be open source in order to gain a foothold in Western markets. Otherwise, DeepSeek wasn't really gonna be uh, the flash in the pan because people aren't gonna wanna ship their data overseas. There's too much fear to China stealing our data, i.e. look at what's happening with TikTok getting shut down. Or so we see. We'll see what happens with that. But DeepSeek's commitment is to open source as reshaping industry. Now, there may be some reasons behind this, but they tran their transparency allows for community verification and improvements, and the approach is attracting a ton of developer interest. So if you want to pull a ton of developer interest really quickly, open source your stuff, right? And it's worked really well for them because their app went to number one on the app store and people are pumping data into it, which is exactly what they're trying to do. Now, that being the case, there's a ton of security concerns. Hey, you're sending your data overseas. We're right back to the discussion about TikTok and other things. 
But not only that, they rushed to do this so much that they left a bunch of public accessible databases that DeepSeek left wide open. And so you can see a lot of uh, search information. Wiz is a security firm, and of course they're self-touting themselves here as they should, but they're exa explaining exactly how they went through, how they found it, and then how they were able to exploit it and get into these to see these open databases, databases that are wide open to the world, right? They just simply ran, they did this, ran a very very quick query to say show tables, boom, they're in. And they could then query the tables. Very simple attack. This attack is like 101 level, like a junior hacker in a basic script kitty could find this stuff and they found it really quickly. So it's showing that while DeepSeek was in such a rush to get their stuff to market to beat the West, that they left, made a bunch of shortcuts like leaving open security. Now, did they? tinfoil hat time, right? Did they or did they do that on purpose so that people could come and see stuff? I think there may be a chance that they left this stuff open on purpose. But the situation definitely highlights the importance of a robust infrastructure and rapid development shouldn't compromise security standards. So this really is kind of nasty of them. Now, we talked a little bit about what OpenAI and they're trying to challenge the IP, right? They're trying to say, hey, you stole our IP. Microsoft's obviously not super happy about this. So where does Facebook land in this, right? So initially, uh, Monday morning, Zuckerberg apparently put together four war rooms and had all of the engineers tearing down the deep seek models to figure out how they were doing it. And they were able to. It's not that complicated to reverse engineer and figure out what they're doing to run these efficiently. But Meta CEO announced that a massive AI investment is still going forward. He's not changing his stance on this. He's basically calling the bluff on DeepSeek saying, we know you stole the data. We're still going to do our stuff. We're still going to funnel billions of dollars into this. And I mean billions with a B. They are spending an exorbitant amount of money. The AI arms race is intensifying among these big tech giants because they're all trying to basically just outspend each other to see if they can outspend each other. Now, the cool part about all of this is that I believe that there is some ulterior motive from... Um, from this and so i i like this x post that i want to go through here right deep seek is legitimately impressive but the level of hysteria is indicative of so many first of all it is a level of hysteria are they better than OpenAI? yes oh has open ai open source their stuff no so what did we get the best model out there on the scores right now open sourcing it has this changed my opinion on ai absolutely not in the 1960s people said calculators were going to replace mathematicians guess what mathematicians today are some of the highest paid people out there you go do and get a phd on math you will get picked up for some serious dollars right so if you love math go for it so my opinion of this has not changed but the five million dollar number is bogus and it absolutely is. It put, it's pushed by a Chinese hedge fund to slow investment in American AI startups, which it successfully did this week. Service their own shorts against the American Titans like NVIDIA, that's totally possible, and hide sanction invasions. And this is absolutely it too. They're definitely trying to get around this. America is a fertile bed for psyops like this because our media apparatus hates our technology companies and wants to see President Trump fail. I don't know if I totally agree with the last part, but the first part, and he's definitely got some interesting food for thoughts. We have so many useful idiots uncritically reporting Chinese propaganda, in fact, because on some level they want it to be true. In this case, they actually want, like, I want to see AI be, you know, cheaper, but the reality of the matter is it costs a ton to train these models. And DeepSeek cheated a bit, skipped, cut some corners, stole everybody else's work, they copied off their neighbor, and then after copying off their neighbor, improved it and made it better. Is that what happened? Absolutely. I think that's pretty indisputable from what we've seen this week, right? And the market is going to adapt, right? People are still going to pump into AI. People are still going to be hyping it and still selling it. It's still not going to replace humans. For how long have you been hearing that robots were going to be flipping burgers every time we hear about minimum wage going up? Now, I'm not a huge fan of minimum wage going up. Don't get me wrong. But we still don't see robots flipping burgers, right? If that were true, a robot flipping a burger is very much more real than, um, and I mean at scale and really, can you get a robot to do it? Yes. Are we seeing people doing it in restaurants? No. As soon as I see that happen, I might say we may be 20 to 30 years away from it replacing developers. Right now, the best developer scores that AI are getting on the best coding models, and DeepSeek is one of the best coding models, by the way. They have some optimized coding models for coding but we're still seeing it score in the 15% range. So I don't know about you, 
but I think 15% is pretty far from five nines, right? So I do think that what we have right now is that we're going to see more uh, focus on efficiency and AI. And I think that's good. I've been touting smaller AI, more directly focused. I love the idea of the development towards AI agents. I think this is the right place to go because it's going to put boundaries on what the AI can do. It's not better to go bigger. I don't believe we will ever hit AGI. As a software developer who's written a lot of lines of code, I don't believe AGI will ever become a full reality. At the end of the day, there has to be humans to innovate. All AI can do is regurgitate because it's autocorrect on stereo steroids. Is it on steroids? It's on pretty powerful steroids, but it's not going to replace humans. So that's why I think we're going to see more specialized AI solutions to be able to replace specific things, right? We're going to see new collaboration among models. We're going to see people starting to open source more. I think as we see these open source contributions, we're going to see a democratization of AI. I'm a big fan of that because no matter whether you're a big corporation who's trying to hide that, it's almost impossible to do with chat with LLMs. Once it's out there to make it usable, it is pretty easy to get it to regurgitate it back. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, we love to build custom software solutions for companies as well as to train software developers. So I've got a great offer here for you and let's dive into that. Want to become a software developer but don't want to spend four years in college and rack up massive student loan debts? Think you need technical expertise to get started? Welcome to Startup Hack, a better way to start your software career without student loans and years without income. One-on-one -on -one tutoring is included so you never get stuck and have guidance through the whole process. No technical experience is necessary. Learn at your own pace and in your own space. Startup Pack has worked with local state agencies in your area to make it so that qualifying students can get the program costs covered entirely and students can start earning while they learn. Complete our three-month coding boot camp, gain hands-on experience, and land a paid internship. With two years of experience, on average, our graduates are making over $80,000 per year. The three-month program includes technologies from Microsoft, Google, and Facebook. No debt, just a quick path to earning. Check out StartupPack.com to code your future and start today.